Now, if you remember a couple of videos back, Woody Midgley showed us what I thought was going to be a, a pretty cool model that P-3080 was working on. Well, he's already got to fly it. He did a test flight before he uh, put the paint on, just put a couple of coats of clear, and he said it flew so good he wants to do a real pro paint job. He's looking for P-38 paint jobs now. So anybody out there that has some P-38, I, I got my P-38 video, sent it up to him, and by the way, Gary Levitz, the late Gary Levitz, had a real cool P-38 the with the number 38 in oriental writing on a rudder. I just can't find any pictures of it handy here. And I did get to sit in that when I was in Reno. Anyway, we're always on the lookout for cool stuff, cool semi-scale stuff. We're really looking forward to seeing some pictures of Billy Warwich's He's got a Bearcat under construction. And boy, you can't help but like that P-47. Now it's funny, fall this time of year, and we have, we're well into the fall. We already have the heat on in the house. But we haven't had a frost yet. And the fish go into this semi-dormant state. When the water goes below 60 degrees, we don't feed them. So this is probably the last time they'll be fed till about April or May. I don't know. I always feel bad about not feeding them. But they go into this state of semi-dormancy. And if you feed them, it's, it's definitely not good for them. But we did have a wonderful summer. And I know all the people that enjoy gardening and all the people that enjoy, uh, you know, the world outside of model planes anyway. This was a very memorable summer. This is our last contest of the year, this weekend. Tomorrow will be Saturday. We're going to try to get up to the field. We still have some cleanup chores to do. We need even a little bird over here. Check this little bird out. Okay, I have enjoyed the summer. This is, look at this little guy. He's by the pond. Can they come in and take a little bath in my bird bath here? Don't pay me a cent. There's something about the end of the flowers, usually the end of the flowers and the beginning of the building season. They kind of go hand in hand. We're about at the last week of having nice tree-lined streets in Rutherford. Within the next week or two, all these leaves will be down. Everything will be turning red and orange. This is one of the few parts of the country, New England and here, where we get these beautiful orange leaves falling. Anyway, it looks like we're going to have a nice day up the field. It's Saturday, the day before the last contest of the year. The 1999 contest season is coming to an end. the field here and get set up. It looks like it's not going to be a good flying day. The air is swirling, but I got all my uh, my new test bench and do some running and some pipe testing today. Well, oh, I guess Bruce Olson's up here from New Hampshire. Let's see what he's got. Now this you found in a pamper magazine. Let's see how that works. Okay, that mounts to the table. That mounts to the table. And then I just took a straight edge. Squid it all up together. Okay. And I took the top one off and I put a level on the bottom one. And I right. Played with it till I got it level, locked it up, and. And how many of these do you need to do a wing? Like 10 or something? 16. 16? Per set. Oh, those are nice. 16 in the set. And how much did the set cost? 40 bucks. I bought two. Oh, piece of cake. Now, we could even use these with the marble, you know it? Because we're getting yeah. set up to do our wing. See, I, I That's a nice little deal. I thought about the method you're using with the block. Yeah. But the problem with that is the bench has got to be... Oh, the bench has... With this, the bench doesn't have to be perfect. It yeah, that's another... It doesn't have to be perfect. You can just use a, a level or a plumb bob or something. Right. I thought it was a great idea for 40 bucks. I said, yeah, cool. you bet. You could even do a foam wing with this when you join it. Yes, you could. I've already had that. You could do anything. You could take this one off. If you took this one off, you could lay a foam wing on there. You know, maybe put a... Yeah, make a perimeter. Yeah. Make a perimeter around it. Sure. It's got to be perfect because once you put the level on it, I... Oh, that is nice. That's a nice looking little deal. I 
thought it was a great idea. You know, something for 40 bucks, you can never go wrong anyway. You can use them yeah. for adjustable lead outs. Yeah. <laughs> if you Very get sick, large. Yeah, big. Yeah, 1.24 stroke. For, for Dan Van Jock's flight street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Bruce's adjustable. Yeah, that looks, that looks pretty good though. And this, what's the name of this? Pazilock? Pazilock. It was in last month's paper. Yeah. It's got a picture of this. Captain Ellie Starduster on it. I've, I've seen it, but I, I didn't know what they were talking I looked at it real quick and I said, you know, it's just another one of these wing jig deals. I gotta check it out. Anyway, for all our friends worldwide, this looks like a usable thing. I like to get, you know, Joe, if you, if you get some pictures of this when it's in use, boy. This. It's time to do our annual pipe test. not a great flying day here and we're probably just going to spend the rest of the day doing our pipe testing. A little wing jig of you can see how bumpy the wind is here. Bruce Olsen's in. Andy Alicialis is here though. We'll see if any of them want to brave the wind gods here. But since we do have work to do other than, well, here he is now. Oh yeah, nice air Mike. <laughs> oh man. Circle burner air. You believe this? Oh man, look at that plane wiggle and wobble. Yes, sir, it's a great day to test tune pipes, that's for sure. I hope it's better than this tomorrow for the contest. Jeez, and we had such a nice, what's funny, Friday was such a nice day. Had to work basically all day, couldn't sneak out. Do my thing to go see my mother on Friday. By the time I get back to the house and took care of everything, forget it. Andy, you got your plane with you? How'd that double star deal work out? Good? Or you don't know? Yeah. Give you the mileage? Okay, great. Did you win? All right, that's all it that counts. Tempting the wind gods. Bruce Olsen just will not take no for answer here. You drive four hours, you that's right. You drive four hours from New Hampshire, you will get a flight here. We're basically, uh, we are not of the mind that we need to get a flight. It's, it's going to be worth to fight another day here pretty soon. It's going to be Donutville, Dunkin' Donutville. At this time of year, I think can just, uh, the weather can just change, you just never know. I never noticed Bruce holds his hand crooked like that. Look at this, this body English feel here. Inverted. Just inverted? Bruce was the rookie of the year, I believe, in uh, 82, 83. Can't remember when. He was the rookie of the year. He was a top 10 flyer. Cuts his own foam wings. Has cut them in the past. I don't know if he still does. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. The air is getting. It isn't getting better, Jim. I think it's getting worse. Andy's been running a double star with one extra gasket in him. So far, he's been working out pretty good. He really won the contest, so. But is it close on fuel now, or? Yeah, it's close. Minute, it's close. Close, okay. I was hoping today would be a little warmer. I might get a little warmer. It'll get worse when it's cold. The colder it gets, the more fuel it's going to use. I got a, we could put another gasket in the later if you want. I got gaskets. I'll give you one anyway to leave in your toolbox. Now I remember Andy down in the house last winter making extra sets of wheel pants, modifying the cow to get this look. This, the tucker I guess is the right look. The tucker look. Seems to really have paid off. I really like the way this plane looks. All Brodak finish. 
nice shine. Nothing shines like black as long as you're willing to put up with the fact that on hot days it's murder. Anyway, it really has that nice laid down look. Hey, a train's coming through town next week, Jim. Next week, okay. The 16th. I'll probably go up to Ramsey to watch it again. He goes through there full board. I straight at the bottom of a downhill. He didn't move we get the steam, the steam locomotive. The 614 comes through every year the same week as uh, the week of or the week after the circle burner contest. And I've been on that ride. It's really nice. I'll try to get a minute or two of that on the tape. One of the last of the big heavy steamers pulls 24 full loaded passenger cars. Anyway, we're probably not going to stay much longer. We've got all our work done with the pipes that we wanted to do, all our comparisons and whatever meaningless data we're accumulating over there. Somebody's running something fast on the other circle. What he wanted to do here is try running his double star on muffler pressure. I always run mine on muffler pressure, Andy. I don't know what that means. But when I did mine, now all the testing, it seemed like it liked muffler pressure the best. All right. He's got a big Venturi in this, extra head gaskets. And just to show you, old Mike Cavelli gives me an email yesterday that, ha ha, the Diamondbacks are going to beat the Mets. Well, the Mets won last night, so. Never be a wise guy, Cavelli. It has a lot of pull, doesn't it? Andy Arisiatis is fucking special. Yeah, we look forward to that 614 every year. It comes by for two weekends on Saturday and Sunday, usually in Ruffin, but it goes right through Ruffin. The people line the streets and everybody sits around with a, I don't know, the tourist attraction of the century in Rutherford here. Double star 40. Even on muffler press, he's really making a lot of power here. He's got a big Venturi in here. I think a 312 he said. Big Venturi anyway. Still seems like it's a little over compressed to me. When it's going for a two-cycle, it seems to be going just a little bit harder than I would like. I'd like it a little slower, but hey, he's playing. He's 614 here. I have to admit, 1999 was a great season. Brodax meet was awesome. The Nats, the team trials, all great meets. All of the local contests were, I think the only one that was kind of a bust was flushing, that rain. Everything else was really a lot of fun, and I hope we can close out the season tomorrow with a nice day.
Sounds like he's at least getting through here. Some pretty rock and roll air, anyway. Double Star 40 really is a good running stunt motor. I don't, uh, I don't know. It's one of those real nice little packages that I like. All of these little classic designs with the Double Star 40. Stifle with one more head gasket. Live to fight another day. Smart move, Andy. I'm very impressed with your mature decision. Andy, you want to try one more gasket in that double star? Yeah, definitely. All right, after you launch Bruce, I'll go down the car and get some gaskets for you. I'll put my wing up as collateral. But I don't need any collateral from you. I got you. I got your wife as collateral. <laughs> your van. You get three head gaskets in there now. You had one or you had two? I had one. Now there's three. Now you had three. Now if it's too soft now. Then take one out and you'll be perfect. But boy, that going for it on the uh, when it's starting to run out of fuel, boy, that is high risk stuff. Spooky to oh no, no, not especially the day before a contest. Forget it. Yeah, the problem that Andy's been wrestling with, for anybody that doesn't know some of the tentative cures, is the gas tank is just a little bit too small with the Venturi opened way up like this to 312. He's got three head gaskets in there now. He had two in there when he won the contest. Still plenty powerful. Now with three, anytime you lower compression, you should, in theory anyway, get a little bit better mileage. You can run the engine a little cleaner and a little harder. Now that looks about right. Before it looked like it was a little bit overpowering in the two-cycle part of the flight. And one of the problems most people have real trouble identifying is when a motor is too powerful. When it's got too much power in the two-cycle part, it can really make you crazy. It can just be one of the things where you wonder, did you forget to fly or what? This looks about right now. Three gaskets. And again, the one in my little profile cardinal is dead bone stock. So I don't really think you need to do any of these modifications. I think if you just left the Venturi the way it was, it would have been fine. But any of these changes. Now another thing you can do, and we tried, but the cowling on here is of such a shape it's hard to get an air filter on. A lot of times you can put one of those little air filters on, green or black. Green will reduce it a little bit more than the black, but let's say the black one will give you two extra laps, green one might give you four or five. If you're looking for that little bit of extra mileage, the penalty is it'll reduce the motor run, the brakes some, just a little bit anyway. And 
and since he's the only one practicing today, I guess he's going to have a good shot at winning the contest tomorrow, one way or the other. We got a lot of meaningful data out of our pipe testing today, and it's a good, for me, it's a better day to test pipes. But before we actually have the final design set in, set in, set in Teflon, I want to make sure I have the optimum baffle arrangement and the optimum cone shape. We're at 7 and 20 right now, which really have been working well for us. The ones we used at the Mass Cup, that was really nice. The 720 is the pipe we used at the Team Trials and the Nats. Both of those, I think the runs were just fine. of power up top. If anything, it's so overpowered. Yeah, if I were flying this, and it's, I wouldn't suggest he do it, but I like it a little softer. I would be even adding one more gasket. Let's see how he does with the mileage. This is a thing that a lot, of, a lot of stunt flyers just point blank overlook when they're doing their engine tuning. And this is on 5% power master fuel, GMA signature fuel, so we know there's oil in that fuel, the right oil content. Well, I don't know, that gets spooky. Time to add another gasket, Andy. Now another way to even get a little more mileage is with the air filter. If the problem is with this cowling set, it's hard to get that on there, huh? I think what you need to do is get it on and then put the cowling on. Yeah, that, I don't know if that'll. You need work. to get that. Yeah, that was hokey. But I'll teach you to make one of those fancy cowlings. Simple, right. Live to fight another day. Yep. Tell us what the idea is, because I, I've never seen this either. This is a good idea, though. It's a it's a uh, pen spring inside the, the inside tubing. The tubing because you have to make real you know and now I had to make a ninety degree bend inside because things were so tight and you don't want it to collapse and so you always keep a couple extra pens yeah, obviously just go get some old ballpoint pens that's a great idea and here's a double one up here see yeah if you ever had a tubing kink see? now you want to make sure that I'm sure there's no sharp edges and you and you check it by going. You get well, the and look at the last where the last coil is. It's not going to stick up. Oh yeah. Bend it down like a fish hook. But I take WD-40. Okay. And just insert it in there. And the WD lets the spring go right in. Yeah. Hey, that's a good idea. Well, you're loaded with good ideas today. You got any ideas how we can get the Dunkin' Donuts work. and get some coffee for free, or what? My ideas are working here for my plane here. But. Well, all right. Now you couldn't get the air filter on for more mileage. You want to put another head gasket in? I. If it was my plane, I'd put one more gasket, but, I, you know, you like it probably fast like that. Do you think one more would... It's up to you. What was it going to take to try? We're going to be here another hour, so... Yeah, let's try it. Try it. What do you got to lose? You still got your box and everything here? No. Well, it's contest morning, and it looks like we're going to have a rain out for about the third time this season. But what we do, we have some stuff to deliver up to the guys, and hey, we'll hang around the field an hour or two and see if it lets up. If it does, I'm sure there'll be somebody up there. Now, 
I just wanted to make one little note. Mike Cavell did apologize. He is sending a pepperoni pizza courtesy of the Arizona Diamondbacks. The Mets got their last win yesterday. Mike, never root against the Mets. They always lose anyway. Anyway, boy, I hope this rain lets up. I'm flying in this weekend. You think there's no hardcore people in the circle burn as well? Somebody's already flying in the pouring rain. Oh, man. <laughs> anyway, we had some cardinal kits to deliver and some things to do here, but I don't think we'll be flying today. promising day today. <laughs> no, show me the strict stuff you got. What do we got up here? 040, this is like a good day for an 049 Cessna. <laughs> I put three cents and I said, you give me another 20 years? He said, well, Bob, I don't know what to give you 20. Right. Right. Well, the other two. The other well, you made it till today. That's an accomplishment. Yeah, the other two are wide open. Mm -hmm. no. That's it's why I started, so we opened this, a store in the city, and I've been cheating a lot on my diet. Mm -hmm. This is Noel Drindak's latest find. Still right up in the Show and tell, Noel. Okay. Show and tell, Noel. Let's go. Come on. Let me see you break one. Yeah. Uh, what well, even got his shirt. breaking one. This is a simple. You did a stress test on it, right? Yeah, I did. 100,000 cycles. Okay. Two pounds push, two pounds pull. Okay. No problem. This is an elevator push rod. Normal maximum load would be about 10 pounds. Yeah. And we did 20 pounds compression and tension. Oh, it's got a little ball link in it. That's a regular Rocket City ball link. Okay. And does it come with that ball link on there? Or? No, but they sell them. You can get them commercial, okay. Yeah. And how do you thread this end in here? Where's that other bit? How does that thread in there? Can you take one apart? Oh, here we go. Okay. Let's go. Let's see. Here's one of the end fittings out there. Okay, it's got little like uh, he calls it barbs. It's actually little rings there, so you can seat some epoxy in there. Yeah, uh, you glue it in with JB weld. JB weld. Okay, cool. Yeah. And you don't pin it? No, I don't think so. I I've been pinning the ones that I build, but you pin them, I know. I so to pin this thing, you're going to have to drill through titanium, which is pretty tough to do. Not impossible, but it's, I hope that your drill. I hope we're going to wear your drills out doing it. Well, you just drilling through a 440 bolt is pretty tough to do. Yeah, I'm hit. It's titanium, it's a little tougher. Well, for the grand finale, I was going to see what the maximum load on this thing would be. And I hung 100 pounds yep. on it, at which point the ball links are really at their limit. You know, oh, yeah, the ball links won't take much more than 100 pounds. <laughs> and if you break the ball links, what's the point? I mean, what's the point? You're not driving a car with this. <laughs> exactly. It looks cool. But, but if you, if you think that 100 pounds is not a, a significant load, <laughs> it's half of me. <laughs> oh, oh, it stays. <laughs> hang 100 pounds on the tail of your stunt plane and go. <laughs> I'd like to see Lampy on pick up 100 pounds. Yeah, well, we'd have a heart attack here. Hey, yeah, that looks I mean, pretty bad. Rehab now. now, what's the weight relative to a piece of 337 <laughs> wire? Same? <laughs> Heavier or lighter? Lighter. Lighter. I'm not sure what the 332 would be. This guy weighs a third of an ounce. I fought with the insurance. Actually, a little less than a third of an ounce. And they turned me down. They told me you need to. And that's a push rod for a pattern master. Into the cardiac rehab. Make sure you won't die. Mm hmm. They told me I did too good on it. It feels heavier than 332nd wire, I gotta tell you. I mean, I don't know, maybe the links are heavier. <laughs> I don't know if that's heavier. Not that heavy. I guess, I don't have a grain, obviously a grain scale, but... It probably weighs a half an ounce like this. With the ball and some 
on the outside of the gas. I'm not sure. All right, bro. Once you get it going, it pisses me off. Regardless, I'm still paying for the summer. About a quarter. If you want to go with 3:30 seconds, wire fine. If you want to go with some of the place, absolutely bulletproof. You don't know exactly what you're doing. What I mean, 3:30 second wire never breaks. That's the the good point. Why poker, man? Wow, well, it's not a point. Look, but, but if you're having fun, that's the point. I'd like to see if you can yeah, heat this. Can you heat and bend it? Can you heat and bend it? Does that work? Yeah, to put a curve in it. They can make carbon fiber landing gear. Why are you? Put me right out of business. That'd be fun. <laughs> What's the ID on it? Hey! Uh, oh, oh yeah, it's your turn, Bruce. <laughs> it's like when he turned me down. This is what, this is the ID on it right here. first round is always like a That's the ID right there, whatever the diamond okay. that is. I don't know exactly. Perfect. It's probably about, uh, it would have been nice if you used fine threads. You could get a, you used, well, I guess it's hard to thread titanium. I I'm think sure I, it's hard I'm trying to talk the guy into building some left-hand threads. 632. If you do them left or right, it's the same amount of work. You put left on one end and right on the other yeah. end. Yeah. Turn buckle. Right. 632 is percentage-wise one of the strongest threads. Uh, this, is, this is good. Yeah. I like 632, fine. <laughs> I like the 440 because you've got finer adjustments. That is relative to a real arrow shift is how good. Same? Stronger. Stronger? Yeah. I don't think you can put a 20 pound compressive load on an arrow shaft without it bending. No, we never got it. I think we were on one, one thing the guy did tell me about this, this is an uh, arrow shaft like they use on Olympic bows and arrows. This is really precision stuff according to Central Obvious. Okay, right, right, right. But he says that the hole is exactly in the center of these guys. Okay. Uh, and the ones that aren't exactly in the center of the rejects are used for stunt kites and stuff like that. Center of the mid Exactly right. But the deal is, if the hole is not exactly centered, they tend to bend easier when you put a computer in one dimension. Yeah. You look at this thing and you say, boy, they're all rolling in here. I don't know these we even, <laughs> Damarel's even here. <laughs> oh, we're going to have fun today. I can see this coming. Now we can fly. Damarel is here. We're going for breakfast. Yeah, the diner is looking better and better today. I got donuts and rolls in the car. No, that ain't no good. We're going to make a south. We'll go for an NFL Sunday A Mets celebration. Cavell emailed me. The Diamondbacks are going to kick the Mets ass this big thing. The next day, sorry, I guess you were right. <laughs> I wish they would have. I wish. Yeah. Who asked you? <laughs> you always root for the overdog anyway. <laughs> no, I like Buck Showalter. Smile! <laughs> he made it. I like Buck Showalter, the manager. And the Yankees dumped on him when he was the manager of the Yankees. I would like him to allow carbon fiber bats. I'd go in that. <laughs> Titanium bats are out, Lord. Aluminum bats are out. Aluminum, I mean. Yeah. All right. Steve, what do you got? New plans here? Yeah, get out of there. We got to premiere the plans. Come on, let's see the new Steve Busso plans. Yeah, let, me, let me have my coffee. Get this is out of here. This is the one in uh, Bill Hummel's car. And these are done on waterproof paper. <laughs> Bill Hummel's waterproof drafting supply. <laughs> here's the, here's the built up <laughs> room. Is You're right. You're right. You're right. Hey, Pio, get your fat ass. Ah, come on. Right. <laughs> here's all the built 690 <laughs> square inches. Right, no, this, is built, this is your plane build, the one you made? Yeah, the one that's, yeah, yeah. that flies good. Um, foam wing, who cares? Same thing, less parts. Here's, 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 here's where the action is. Oh, yeah. It looks, like, it looks like your plane. Yeah. I'd sue him, Lampy. Just, just round that out. Yeah. No, 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 no. Round this one. Oh, I smell a lawsuit here. Yeah, it's terrible. What's up with it? Wow, well, Mike Rogers' wheel pants. He's got all the goodies on you. I designed it for me. <laughs> That looks nice. Did you? Is this already so done for Mike? What's the no, name? No, knockout? No, no, no. no, no. Yeah, it's a knockout. You just knock one out. You just knock one out. Just knock one out. Really easy. Yeah. Nice yeah. 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 so yeah. 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 parts. I can Sounds like a stray. Get a fewest parts. At the minimum work. Three parts. Right. So if you just shrink the top down and extend the bottom, we can put a pipe in. 
Yeah. 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 Ye
A lower pitch prop usually would mean that you're running the motor harder in more of a two cycle. The more of a two cycle you're going to run it in, obviously it's going to run hotter and you're going to use less fuel per whatever you want to define it as. But, but this enters into the, the maybe part of this. These are the three things that if you have a, a good basic understanding, you go to a contest, and you can afford to trade off a little bit of power. All of these, by the way, require better mileage is always offset by a little bit less power. Almost always. In other words, when you have the highest compression, the biggest venturi and the highest nitro, that's when you're making a tremendous amount of power. A lot of times it's not even stunt power, it's just power you can't use, pylon power. Getting a real good stunt run a lot of times will require lower nitro, smaller venturis, and head gear, some combination of these to give you the mileage. Now in Andy's case he worked it out that the head gasket, in fact he took all my head gaskets, I hope I ever get them back someday. We tried to run a venturi air filter but boy it was tough getting it on with that super cal and it was already at 5% so just knowing this information, it's this kind of information that can really save your day when you get to a contest and you're running out of fuel. Now in the olden days, and one of the things I, I don't like to see people do, Jim Casal used to do this, he used to go to a gas station and get Amico white gas and put 10% in the fuel. Well, I don't like that at all. That is not, that, that's tremendous heat buildup and you're getting, you're getting into an area where I don't know, I, this, at this point in time, I think it's time to figure out what the real problem is. So these things right here, I would be putting question marks by them and wondering if that's really necessary. But the big three, if you keep the big three in mind, you'll be able to deal with, and obviously the exact opposite is always true. If you're running and, and you have fuel to spare and you don't want to take it out, you can always try a little higher compression, a little bit bigger venturi, or a little bit higher nitrate. You, ha you have a lot of variety, but keep these three in mind. These are the three that always equate to how much fuel and how much power a particular setup is going to make. It's good information, you can put it right in the bank. Now other things of interest, we've been working on our plans for the new Miss Ashley P51. Making, maybe doing a little bit of work on them each night as time permits. Trying to, trying to get caught up on a lot of the little things so that we have the whole deck free and clear. We're doing the rest of our tune pipe mandrels things like that. So the whole day, this by the way is a piece of a tombstone that Mike picked up and we're going to make on a future video, probably the next video that the subscribers get, a wing jig. And that is about as straight and flat as anything we could work with. Still have to make the end plate, still have to do a lot of the layout. But I did manage, and of course we're shooting more than one video at once, so it's difficult. I did manage to, to lay out the wing, try to get a feel for it. I miss Ashley has a swept back wing. We'll, we've been teeter-tottering with the idea of maybe sweeping the hinge line back, maybe leaving it straight and making a flap sweep back. Still no final decision on that yet. More on that as we evolve into it, but certainly right now it looks like we're at least no more than a week away from 100% full building time. They've rescheduled the contest for next week, but it looks like this is going to be the basis of the plans, we're going to try to get real plans drawn of course, but this should be the beginning of what I hope is going to be the, the wing that we're going to use in both fuselage options for the upcoming building season and that's one of the things I'm really looking forward to right now. Now one of the things <coughs> that I've had the best luck with is this jet vacuum that I guess is used industrially to uh, pull sawdust out of real w workshops. But I've had such good luck with this, I've even written a model airplane article on how to do this vacuum bench. I want to I want to expand my capability and you can see how this hose just runs back into a hose. And I have a video on doing this when we actually set this up and it really did work well. And it goes into this bench, which right now we got a molded carbon gear mold here, but one of the things I wanted to show is how, how convenient this is because we're going to do a little expansion on it today. And you can see some of the wood chips are even still in there from carbon, whatever the last thing was, but anything that goes near that boom, just gets sucked right in there. But what I have now is, 
what I did, I was down at this place, Woodworkers Warehouse. I got their catalog. And what I did, I, I made a real big effort at researching out some of the other possibilities for doing this. Now one of these, they have these neat blast gates, which if you have more than one hose hooked on, it's just like a, a, uh, a valve, really. So you can turn one hose on, one hose off, one hose on, one hose off. When you have more than one, you need a Y fitting. And this was about 60 bucks for the whole thing. The hose, the hose clamps, believe it or not, the hose clamps are an expensive part of this. And you need, you need a bunch of them anyway. And I got a piece of this hose. Now what I'm going to do, what I'm going to try to do anyway, I bought this other gizmo here. Let me show this right now. The gizmo that holds the, well I guess it's a little box like thing. And I want to put that above my saw and above my little area out there in such a way that when I'm working on a jigsaw, because I'm going to be cutting up a whole bunch of kits real soon, and usually that's very sawdust, I guess sawdust intensive is the right word. But one of the things that allows me to do then is that it'll get a lot of the dust that normally winds up in the heating vents of the house, and we're going to be turning the heating vents on real real soon. I like to keep that, I don't know what you call it, you want to call it the dust or whatever out. Now, if you look in here from working on this saw, and I've moved this around, we now have a little lathe, and we use this for doing the tune pipes. But I have these, these tools kind of permanently mounted to this old Formica bench. And I want to have that hood come down right on top here because what happens at the end of every day I go around scooping this dust up but you can see it's still you still get a lot more dust than I would like to have and certainly a lot more than is healthy for anybody to breathe and I know people don't think I wear a mask when I work out here I do and it's ha it's hanging right here I just don't wear it when I'm shooting video because I don't like to sound like I'm underwater Anyway, this nice little wave that I've been using every day now in the in making tune pipe parts, it's coming very handy. Woody Midgley gave me this. And we're doing a little shop organization because very soon we're going to be working on getting ready to build our new plane. And I've got all the little pieces that normally I uh, don't use all summer. We even got a new drill press this year. The other drill press finally gave up the ghost after about 75 years. Dave Midgley gave me this as a birthday present, a set of matched precision drills. But the idea here is, is every once in a while, and today just happens to be today, every once in a while you have to just take and bite the bullet and spend the whole day doing something like reorganizing things. Now what I want to do today, I have on my list of things to do, I want to get this hood set up. I also picked up this little tray while I was down in Home Depot because what I want to do this end of the bench, when more than one person is working here, it just tends to get sloppier and sloppier, and I have my little box to hold all the CAs and special glues and Q-tips. I try to keep everything as organized as I can up at this end of the table, and then I try to work up at the other end. Well, what happens is when two people are working here, or three people, or five people, you, you just run out of space. And the other plan is, I'm just mentioning this real quick, We've always had this nice rack here that holds the planes. Well, what's really happened in the last couple of months, because of making tune pipes virtually every day now, making carbon bell cranks and needing all this space for mandrels and tow and molds and foam parts and all the carbon side. What's happened? I'm, and I'm just running out of room. I'm just physically running out of room. This is getting to be a little bit too crowded even for my uh, ability to deal with it. So what I've decided to do is we have an empty room now since Craig has left the house and I'm going to make a room up there to store the models so I don't have them in the cellar. And it'll just give me one extra, maybe a, an 8 by 10 space over in this corner where I don't need to use the models. I don't need to have them in the cellar. So let me start laying this out, how I'm going to mount this, and maybe I can even put a couple minutes of this on the tape. If you've never used one of these jet vacuums, a shop vac is complete nonsense. You cannot listen to a shop vac for any length of time without getting a headache. Now what I originally did, and this is the old system that we're going to be replacing. This old guy was just a shop vac that I have hooked right to the belt grinder. But even this system, you can see what happens. There's always a lot of dust on that. 
So I'm hoping that this hood, maybe even leave the shop back here and use the hood at the same time. Because especially in making a carbon fiber landing gear, one of the things that just generates a tremendous amount of dust, I've been throwing away those, those mass cartridges like they're candy. And there's no reason to have that dust in the house. It's just an unnecessary thing. So, and you can even see down here, even a saw, you just never get all of the dust out. But I'm going to see how that hood works. I want to run the pipe up around the ceiling, bring it down here, and connect it in with the Y into the stove pipe here, but I don't know exactly how that's going to work out yet. So, anyway, just wanted to show this because I know a lot of people that have a modeling shop right in their house, one of the major problems that they deal with all the time is the dust. And for about, this is about $60 worth of parts and hoses and clamps, assuming you have a vacuum or a jet you can get this, that it's a lot more palatable. Now after I routed the hose, and believe me, if I can give you one piece of advice when you buy this, if, if you go to do this, get plenty of extra hose, you need a blast gate which shuts, turns the air on and off for each one of the attachments that you have. In this case, you have a blast gate up here relatively inexpensive and I want this to be flexible so if I hit it with my nose or something well <laughs> whatever I wouldn't want this to be solid mounted I want to be able to move it just a little bit and one of the things I've done is even after I put hose clamps on some of the joints seemed like they were leaking so I put duct tape over the top of them that seemed to help a whole lot but right now I would guess that's going to go a long way toward keeping the dust out of the house Again, you need, you need more hose than you think you do, and you always wind up having to go back to the store for four or five more clamps. I don't know, I don't know how I, I figured this out on pencil and paper, did a real a little chart and everything, came home and was four clamps short. So anyway, I hope in the future that's going to go a long way to keeping the dust down in the house, and it's a good idea that you can put into practical use in any shop. Last thing I want to do this in this session is I want to get this tray organized here. Try to get this cleaned up and organized because we're getting ready any hey any day now. We get some time to build. We already got the ribs laid out and everything. We want to really get going on this building project. It's going to happen this Sunday. They've postponed the uh, week two again. But the weather has been so brutal. We have not had good weather for this, this end of the year. After a drought this summer, now we're looking at just the craziest of weather. But we definitely can start building. What I want to do is I want to reorganize that end of the table. I want to put all the things up here that I really need and segregate them out for my building. So about once a year I have to do this is just rip the whole table apart and get everything organized. Look at this, while I'm digging through this stuff, I pick up John Brodak's Yankees right at the time of the World Series, too. Play it. I always feel good at the end of, actually any time I spend organizing things, I always try to think of it as an investment, not a uh, an hour spent organizing things. I usually save 10 hours somewhere down the road. Next project we're going to do, we're going to make like a little prefab kit here for Mike Estella. Now what Mike has, and this is, this is I guess the way most people do everything, is he has a set of these plans, the knockout Steve Busso plans, and he wants to use, and I think it's a really cool idea, use a cardinal fuselage wing and tail. Well, Kenny's going to cut him a foam tail, which is what I'm going to use. And we just happen to lay the, uh, 
the, the sides from the kit that Mike has on there, and you can see it's it's not a whole lot different. But he wants to make the bottom a little bit wider to allow for the pipe. So what we did, we went through the wood, and we came up with really two two nice straight pieces of wood. So we're gonna the first thing we're gonna do is make up a couple of fuse sides here, and then we're gonna make the crutch up. Now, Mike's wanting to make it that it's for a Tiger 60 and a Super Tiger 60 interchangeably, so I'm going to have to look at both motors before we make the crutch and this, and figure out how we're going to set the bolt pattern. I think a, a PA and a Tiger fit together, but I don't have both of them sitting here right now. i got to wait till Mike comes in with the motor. I'm going to make up a couple of bell cranks for Mike with the old system, the system that we used in the in the I-beam Spitfire where we have little pins here and we just took the, the normal glass nylon bell crank and a table saw and cut that notch in there. Doesn't have to be real fancy but now that allows that there's no bends in the wire. That's the nice part of that. It also the pull is right in the middle of the bell crank rather than being out on the outside so that's kind of a nice little way to do it. And we'll be, we'll be doing this on Miss Ashley too of course. about going up the field this time of year for about uh, well maybe a month or so every every trip up to the club field the leaves are a different color you can see we've just started to enter the, the time of year that everything's starting to turn yellow and orange it's really pretty and usually one of the prettiest spots around believe it or not is the club field and as long as you get weather the problem is as you could I think we did it on the beginning of this video the weather can be so unpredictable this time of year. You get nice spots, you get spots where it's raining and uh, so we'll roll the dice. This is this is the postponed contest. This is Saturday, the day before the look at the squirrels running around here. But it's funny how and I only mention it because we are at the end of the season and we are itching to get building. Our little fingers are just itching. This time of year I just want to get the season over and get down that cellar and start building a new plane. It looks like even the sun's coming up here, we may get some air, who knows. But every day is an adventure, no two days are alike, you never know who's going to show up, and you certainly never know about the weather. Yeah, the hawks are already circling over the circle burn field, but boy, we are in for a treat of a day. Look at the beautiful leaves are turning. Oh, I just heard something happen back there. Got a nice crowd going here. It looks like they got both circles going. Let's go see what these guys are up to. They're always up to something evil. The fact that we have good weather today probably means tomorrow will be a blowout. It really is a nice day. Tricky stuff are you guys up to here? Uh, There's no radio control flying at this field, my boy. That's right. This is control line only. <laughs> Radio control. You guys don't know if you're Polish or Italian on this circle. What's we're, going on here? Flying by wire. Flying by flyer. Flying by flyer. And a four stroke. Oh. No, it's not. I know, but I'm just trying to oh, get oh. make Orgy crazy. I know he's been drinking this morning. I'm going to have my four stroke tomorrow. You know, whenever you say Orgy's been drinking, you're always right because he drinks all the time. Are you kidding me? Orgy, you haven't had a drink in how long? One thousand years. <laughs> don't believe this guy. This is a practice flight for us. tomorrow and stunt too. Boy, it's going to be a crowded day. And carry it. Oh. Yeah, may as well stay home tomorrow. Go watch the steam engines coming through town. The 614's coming. Yeah, that's what they say. The yeah. Ride is on. I went on that ride. It's wonderful. Really oh, cool. I, I, the, I, the autumn leaves. Oh, yeah. I Fantastic. Did the, I did the ride out of Scranton a couple of years ago. That is one beautiful ride. Oh, yeah. It's Pennsylvania, beautiful. Well, I had the luxury, and I'm sure that uh, Augie did too when I was in the military. Oh I, yeah, you had plenty of steam rides. <laughs> I saw plenty of steam locomotives, because that's what they were using. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, and I went all the way down to Florida with the first For a contest, all the hard noses are out here practicing. Look at those leaves. Oh my God. This field, in this time of year, is unbelievable.
And look at the breeze, almost no breeze. Oh, you're gonna get killed tomorrow. Tip, now Mike has experienced Pretty something ship. that we've seen Pretty in other ship. times. Okay. The nut Should to like the it. spinner was gold to the, the prop nut. That happens a lot of times with aluminum to aluminum. Is that an aluminum screw, Tom? Whoops, it is now. Anyway, what we did is we put a drop of never seize on it. And where's that dish back plate? Let me show, let me see that back plate. You put that screw down. This is one of these back plates that's aluminum and he tried to lighten it up and you can see it's turned into a dish. It's got a curve in it. It was rubbing on, we heard this. We were on the other circle and I heard this. It chewed up the whole front of the plane. So maybe the answer here is if you're gonna run this kind of a lightning back plate to let it stick out. Here's another problem, Mike. See what, here's, here's the kind of things that make you crazy. See on the back plate, no knurls. See how that, that just burned its way on? See, it should have knurls like this. Mm -hmm. So you can do that with a tool. Well, that's that's the kind of tip you want to have. Everybody should knurls or that sandpaper washer. Mm -hmm. So for now, see if that washer gives you enough. And definitely this, you can deep six it. This is gone. Anyway, what we try to do with the videos is anytime there's a problem, we try to pass it on so other people don't fall into the same trap. Lightening a back plate is real nice. But, but even carbon back plates, if you over tighten the spinner, I have a feeling what you did is over the course of time, you just kept tightening the spinner, and every time you tightened it, this got further and further back into the plane. I need more. So I don't know. You need, well, I have more of them. Take another one out of my box. Have on anything that's, that's a prop mating surface is some kind of nails, or this is done with an engraving tool. You don't want anything smooth. This is exactly what you don't want, is a polished surface. You want something rough, nailed, whatever. Anyway, that could be, the problem with this happening is two things. The prop can come loose in flight, which typically will give the motor a nice lean run and, and can't do it any good. If it happens on the ground and somebody happens to be standing in that prop bark, you can, you can have an accident. So, Merle's a good idea. And not having dished back plates, crushed back plates. Anyway, a good lesson. Everybody can learn from it. Hey, do I keep a little jar? little film canister of never seized. This is, you buy that in any machine shop supply store or any place that sells grease. I believe it's a mixture of graphite and grease. Typically on aluminum spinners, the aluminum screw and the aluminum nut will grow if you over tighten them. This totally keeps it from happening. Cheap. It's no good, Mike? Okay. Another great idea is always have a spare spinner in your toolbox because days like this, if this happens at a contest, you're screwed. Today it won't matter, but happens tomorrow, it's a problem. All right, so luckily we fixed all of Mike's problems here. And boy, that is a tip worth its weight in gold. Never use any smooth surface. We call it a clutch face. No smooth clutch faces anywhere, even on an 049, let alone a 60. Everything should have some kind of a tooth or a knurl. Anyway, Mike's got his cardinal kit here. He's come up the ranks in this one season. He's gone from the bottom of intermediate to where I think he's actually won a couple times in advance. He's not going to win the, uh, the Clutch Face of the Year award here, though, anyway. Anyway. Always good to share the information when you have a problem. Jim Vanderell's here with his PM. He's been getting some good flights with this today. Andy Arisiatis had some really nice runs the other day. Got his double star decompressed. Big Venturi. Been working with this plane. He's going to let me fly this later. The air is starting to go though, but I want to get a flight on this. And in return, I'll let him fly Strager. An old Strager. Just never say die Strager. Now he knows, see he knows. I'm I'm already starting Miss Ashley, so this we're gonna lose Miss uh, Miss Strager here. He's getting jealous already. Like a woman who knows her husband has a girlfriend already.
Now what Mike did this morning, he wound up putting three head gaskets in this. It was real cold this morning. Had three head gaskets in it, got too wimpy, took one out. It's just about right right now. Anyway, this is one of the things that makes the Circle Burners a, a real good group. They tend to all give each other a hard time. As soon as you need some help, hey, every toolbox on the field is yours. And boy, I really have to say, we have gotten a lot of use out of old Strager. Testing all these jet engines, testing pipes. God, this thing, the whole the fuselage is so worn out. That's one of the reasons I want to try next year to have a removable fuselage. The head gasket worked well? Flying all day Saturday last Great. Night. Flight after flight after. Well, I expect to see you write that up for stunt news now that you're, you know, you're like, you've discovered something that works, share it. You know how many, there are probably 500 double stars in the world, share the information. Whatever size you made the Venturi and the head shims and stuff, write it up, I'll put it in my column. You know, you got to pay back. It isn't always take, 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 take. You know, you got to go buy coffee once in a while. Actually, we've taken more from Andy. He made up the tool for the Jet Venturis. And how many other things did you make? Probably too many for me to mention. A good man. What's Aldrich up to these days? He had his eyes operated on. He had his cataract surgery. I haven't talked to him since then. Anyway, I love the look of this plane from the nose. This is a, this is a slick looking plane. Tucker Special, Bobby Hunt had a real cool one. This one I think is even cooler. They're all cool. The real pants. What you need is a 60 Tucker. Do they make one? No, I don't know. I know that there's a, there's a 60 size lock out. Yep. Yeah, I talked to Ed Southwick the other day. Uh -huh. He's looking for Super Tiger 60 Hemi head. Yep. All right, let's see a good pattern, baby. With an erector set motor or something again on 180 some odd pounds away, they didn't move. Okay. And boy, I can't say enough about this guy. He is one of our club's most talented people, always willing to spend some time helping other people. An excellent machinist. He just got a new job, he said, as a uh, using the most modern of the CAD cams, the CAD powered stuff. Anyway, really cool guy. So he's got this double star running as good as I've ever seen one run. And if anybody out there has any questions about the double star, they want to rework one, give Andy a call. He knows more than I do. And he's got email, too. You don't even have to pay for the call. It's so cool. Hey, and I hope by now everybody's checked out my website, Windy You. Windy Ertnowski, I should say. Com. Check that website out. It lists all the Brodak dope, all of the plans, all of the videos that we have, and we're adding to it every day. And there's a club you can join where you'll get free technical stuff and who knows what else, even a slice of pizza maybe once a month. Anyway, we're going to be working on updating that in the next short amount of time. 
Nice flying tucker, boy. Anyway, I just hope to hope to hope that tomorrow is going to be a we have a reason to turn out because anytime we have a contest that's canceled, it's hard for people to make plans with their family on very short notice. But uh, hey, we'll try. And based on today, how nice today turned out. Wow, and it's still early. Now usually I leave the field before most people get here because today we have some stuff we're going to have to do down at the house. And I don't like to be away all day from the woman I love, my honey pie. She usually plans my activities. And if I get back later than 12 o'clock, I get <clears throat> no pizza for lunch. Anyway, glad to see Andy get some of the little motor idiosyncrasies worked out of this. And passing that information on, you'd be surprised how many people just don't know about when to add a head gasket, or what the effect of adding a head gasket is. And it seems like basic knowledge, yet there's so many people. I've noticed another thing too, since we've been sending tapes overseas, a lot of the people overseas don't even know a lot of these trim things that we take for granted here. I mean, we take for granted that even intermediate level guys know how to do this. Well, they've heard about it, or they, if they want to try it, but a lot of the guys overseas, they they just put an engine in a plane and go flying. They don't have a lot of these choices, so now that the tapes are over there, I hope they're going to be well used. I hope they're going to be in, of some value to you know, most of the people that use them. And share the information. That's all I can say. got Jim Damarell enlarged the Al Raid plans. Oh, these are nice. 111%. By the way, now anybody would like to have an enlarged set. Let's see if we can see how about how the size wise this is. Anyway, we now have these 111% of Al Raid's plans, and I guess for reference point when we get to the point in this where we want to do our dihedral version with the cuff and the swept forward trailing edge and everything, hey, I'm sure these will be invaluable. I'm looking at how Al Rabe chose to do his horn. That's one of the sticking points that not everybody really agrees on how that should be done, but I guess we're going to find out. Anyway, we got we even have Banjox canopy mold here. Hope real soon we're going to be seeing Danny Banjox play. He may even may even be ready to start showing some pictures of it tomorrow at the contest. Anyway, nice set of plans from Jim Bamero. And I'll have some of these in stock for anybody that really wants to join us on this Mustang project. Hey, be glad to get us up to you. And last but not least, the beautiful canopy mold that Danny made for the Mustang. Well, that is a beauty. Anyway, it's going to be a Mustang one way or another. It's going to be a P-51 Mustang Miss Ashley. We're really not sure yet. Itching, itching to get home and start building. As soon as this last contest is over, boy, I am going into full-time building mode. He's packing up to leave now, so we'll pick this up tomorrow and hope that we have some good weather for the contest.
bad boy contest day. Look at this fog. Unbelievable. Just when we hoped we would catch a break in the weather, get up. Now, they said it's going to be nice today. I'll believe it when I see it, but it's certainly foggy now. It is really foggy out here. I wonder how it feels going to be. Now here is the first lesson of the day. Don't, don't use cheap zip ties on your tune pipe. This is definitely going to fly off and hit somebody. Back button, nope, didn't go off the... You can't use the cheesy zip ties. Use 50 PSI zip ties or this could happen to you. Another great tip from Windy Videos. Yeah, that could be embarrassing. In the back is Rich Jackabone flying through the fog. Look at this, it's almost a surreal experience here. Look at this. GMA Jet 50. Strager. Look at this, he's building another Strager already. Look at this. I hope this fog burns off soon. Pretty cool. After what a nice day we had yesterday, I don't know how this could have happened. Look at it. Is this wild? For anybody who doesn't know, it's not a great time to be using your solid lines either. When it's damp and foggy like this. Look at this. This really looks pretty cool. I think have scale here today too. See a couple of entries out here already. Like something from a Stephen King movie here. Kind of wild. Look at this, look at this sexy guy. Holy, hey Rich, I got some pictures of you flying in the snow here. Man, I didn't know, I didn't know he could fly in the, uh, hey Bobby. How are you, baby? He shakes hands with a razor blade. Is that beautiful or what? Hey, you look good flying in the fog. I'm trying to I couldn't see the plane at all. I, I would have scored you well. <laughs> Based on my memories of your youth. <laughs> See, I never hey, you got this all repaired, huh, Bobby? Wow. Yeah, I, the crack wow. the started to crack out again. So a little oh, the guy that fixed that for you at the Nats, I'd sue him. A little tape and a little... Yeah, I hear you. It still looks good. Listen, thank God it's still flying. It's the only thing I have. <laughs> thank you God know, you're still alive, the hell with that. We could build another plane. Wow. You taking care of yourself? Wing-mounted uh, wing gear. George Alder says, you better take care of yourself. I've been telling him what a bum you are. All that ice cream? Unbelievable. I actually don't eat ice cream. I do eat frozen yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in flight box. I anybody got off. one like that. That's one thing about Noel, man. Noel's a cool guy, but he's got a sloppy toolbox, I'll tell you. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know, I love to see when these things dump on the floor after he got some two the Italian version. Put them all in all the little... Look at this. Look at this guy's got all his little screws in order. And he's, oh, t extra tail wheels. That is great. Yeah, we ought to give it away at the next Nats. Give it to Frank McMillan or something. <laughs> Look at this. He's got his lines in baggies. Oh, I love it. What else is in bed? Hey, you ought to go sell some of these to Al. These are the ones that don't break. Oh, man. I meant to show that to you last time. Have you seen that, that copper material? No, I got, give me a piece of that. Let me see how it works. 
<laughs> yeah, you ought to give it to Al. He might be needing some too. How much does it weigh? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. So Everything you try to buy from Oh, it doesn't weigh anything. You can buy it. Alan has Next to nothing. Alan has Where'd you get that? Your, uh, Let me have one of these. I'll tell you if it works. It works. Well, how would you know? You don't have a tool buy. How do you know anything? Well, what do you think I put my muffler on with? This is good for protecting your fingers with you. That's what I put my muffler on. Yeah. Okay, it lasts up on the header? Yeah. That's good. Well, where'd you get this from? Uh, McMaster car. It's just silicone, 3500 degrees silicone. 500? Yeah. Well, can you get me a couple feet next time you order it? Sure. Give me 10 feet or something. The only problem with it is it's real flexible, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the way I've got my muffler mounted right now, I'm putting a little bend in here. And if I use this on a plane, it wants to sort of squish it. I don't like that. Oh, okay. okay. So I'm having to use the stiffer stuff. There's something else in here for you. Well, when I make you a little muffler, I'll make the bend in the pipe. So this is a, <laughs> the way it should be made by the, by the producer. Yeah. Here. Okay, good. Yeah, let me see how this works out. Yeah. Now, you just want to go like this so bad, don't you? All right, just get the... You know what I would love to see? If you were miserly, what I would do, when you were flying, I'd take this and play shaking big. <laughs> You'd come back, oh, my tool bag is all messed up. This is great. Look, he's got the protective cover. You don't mind if I rank on you. Look, on mine, see, on mine, I have cuts on my hands and things missing. And That's a real man. Real men don't have the protective covers on their stuff. Windy. This is something neat. Oh, yeah. You ever seen these guys? Yes. Yeah, I have a friend that uh, works for Snap-on. He gets me these cool little wrenches that open well, the What's cool valve. about these is that the there's a different size on each end of the wrench. Right. So you can have a quarter inch open end oh, okay. and a quarter inch box end without buying two sets. <laughs> oh, they'll go out of business. Anything that smart will be out of tape. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. Hey, windy. Now, how come you guys don't have a nice toolbox like Noel Drimdak? Where's your... Man, he's making me all jealous. I gotta get a nice tool box. Jackabone's got a nice tool a box. A bowling bag for the fuel? A bowling bag. Yeah, that's good. Rhino, yeah. Ooh, this plane is all wet. Look at this guy. Unbelievable. Mr. Strager. Now, what good is a neat tool box if you don't have a neat plane? Look at this guy. Now, the other thing is he's... He's waiting for me to finish making him a special carbon fiber gear for this. Haven't had time to do it yet. Nice, nice, nice plane. Real nice. Well, we give Noah a hard time about that toolbox, but uh, I guess he's an okay guy. He's going to get me some of that tubing, so I better not say anything bad That's about him. That's your <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I'll let you know if that fits. He's playing the one that was in the car when you wrecked the car? Yeah. Total the car. Well, I've done that already. <laughs> Well, ask Kyle Freeman about that. He took the plane and busted it in half. Well, thanks to Wendy's trash repair. Right. Wendy's auto repair. <laughs> hey, nice hat. No, I got one of them, too. Put, a, put about a hole about the size of a golf ball in the leading Yeah. Area. Well, thanks to Wendy's videos, even you can read. Did you see my website yet? No. Go look up the website. There's some cool stuff. I even mentioned you on my website. What, what's your website? WendyErtnowski.com. I think I'm going to buy my own domain name, too. Is that AOL, or...? Yeah. Oh, okay. For the highest tech. Bobby, this is nice wrap you got here. What you know is this? That is? That's for yo-yos. Yeah, for yo-yos. How appropriate. It's, for, uh, it's, it's made by the... Yo That's nice. Uh, and it sticks to itself. It's spongy. Yeah, yeah, that feels nice. I wow. It sports it You're going to put me out of business. Ah. There goes my grip tape business down the drain. The yo-yo bar? The yo-yo. Yo-yo's taking over. No, Pulling to share his uh, <laughs> mistakes in life. Yeah. Boy, this pipe had a long, short life. Yeah, Holy a, mackerel. That's the Tom Hampshire special. Right? The Tom... Oh, there's Hampshire we can laugh at. And so what did you try to do? You try to JB weld this to a used pipe. That's yeah. that's no good, of course. Yeah. I wonder if this would have worked if you um, had put some reinforcement in here. Such a nice. Well, carbon. You, you put some carbon in there. Yeah. Boy, that is, that is a <laughs> Holy mackerel. <laughs> well, yeah, it was working fine until yeah. yeah. they flew apart. <laughs> well, I'll tell you.
You know, you know how to thing in Avis does exactly and not exactly. Yeah, that's not. This exactly. is not exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is this? this is not the way to run. To George Aldrich does not recommend okay. running tune pipes with JB Weld. See, I made some of these with with this hanging down. I've some the other way, but what's important? This you want to get a rubber up here. Not this. This is not going to work. Yeah. You're going to have a problem with that all along. And you were running pipe pressure or not? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The JB Weld will hold up the fitting on, but well, I don't think up there that's an appropriate choice. Yeah, I don't work. think that that's going to do it. Truth is, I heard that circle burners are a bunch of meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? It's a, yes. a club meeting. It's this true. is a club meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Rich Peabody's ten closest friends. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I mean, here we are at yeah. the contest. Great. We could have meatballs a la Benedetti. Oh. Yeah. Scarinzi, uh -oh. Stella. Uh, so I thought, I thought, oh, here he goes. Steven's going in. Oh, nah. That didn't sound good. It sounded like nah, he didn't hurt anything. Was, yeah. it sounded like something broke. <laughs> Another meatball. All these guaranteed <laughs> Italian chefs who could do it right. Who brings the meatballs? <laughs> oh, jeez, Hampshire. Yeah. What is it? I mean, yeah. Vinny's Pizza, Sal's yeah. Pizza. Yeah. So this is like we have a Chinese thing. food in our, in uh, in Rutherford, like O'Hara's Chinese. O'Hara's Chinese. Chinese. Didn't make it. Yeah. How did you do that? Pierogies. So this is this is meatballs a la Hampshire. From where do you get meatballs a la Hampshire? Yeah, I don't know. Silly. I don't know, but we're gonna go deliver the meatballs. Yeah. Pilots meeting. Pilots meeting. Well, how many windy videos you got in there? <laughs> Holy crap! Yeah. Now you got. Listen, I want this on tape. You're gonna build this little profile card, and you're not gonna butcher it all up. You're not gonna put a tune pipe and have one string holding it on <laughs> dental floss or something. Is this a bill wire pipe? Okay. And up here we've got three uh, classes of uh, scale, and uh, Bill Reynolds is in charge of that. And over there we've got uh, carrier, lots and lots and lots of carrier, and uh, whoever's in charge over there. Oh, yeah, let's see. I'll go home and check, put it. I got the thing on the test bench right now. Now you, these these are something for aircraft supply. It's a yeah. thick O-ring for the Venturis, that uh, the long Venturis for the jet. Oh yeah, that's plenty big. There's, uh, I think there's six of them in here, five or six. Okay. S O B four thirteen one thirteen. Okay, and the government is supplying these at the usual cost. Atlantic Aviation. Atlantic Aviation is now sponsoring the jet program. <laughs> Good. I like your attitude. <laughs> Real big intake, but like half inch inside diameter. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? How you can put all no joking. Al, right, well, you're putting those zip ties on, right? You're not, you're not going to fool around with us playing bomb the guys with the tune pipe today. Stroking a cub here. And of course, they're going to have the scale event at the same time they have the stun event here, so things get crowded in the afternoon. In fact, they look like the cub had a baby here. There's two of them. I think they also have profile scale here, but I'm not sure if this is sports scale or profile scale or what, bathroom scale. Antenna. <laughs> plane I put the bell crank in, is it? Is this the bell crank puller out of here? Or is this a new one, a different one? This is, um, that was, that was the you know, I could still remember that day in Edison. You guys were panicking. It was a big deal to pull a bell crank out. Well, not if Wendy's in the parking lot. The center airplane, not on the wingtip. Oh! <laughs> Most guys install it right under the fuselage, Stephen. <laughs> not out at the wingtip. Oh, man. Let's see the latest in, in the... Uh, flip that over. Come on, be a man. There you go. 
You got you got enough connect. <laughs> See, this is leaking. First off, this yeah. is leaking. Yeah. That's no good. This one looks like it's okay, but this one's definitely leaking. Well, let's get all that JB weld under. What? No, what the guys do that use this blue stuff, they use two zip ties on each end, but then the thing starts to weight about four pounds by the time you're done. See, you actually could have a, mi a mount back here would be okay. Yeah, yeah. I might uh, hang a wire around here. Yeah, because this is doing this yeah. when it's flying. That's why it cracked. That thing I gave you, put it, it probably would fit right here, would be good. Yeah. Just cut a hole in the wing. Not perfect. I put a dowel in this way, and then sand it off even. You know, fill it with epoxy, so that you have a hardwood point to mount it to, yeah. and then put that that Dave Brown thing will go right in the bottom of the wing. That'll be nice. That'll fit fine. Yeah. I think that's the way to do that, if, unless you want to keep hitting people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't hit anybody yet. Yeah, but it's only 10 o'clock, <laughs> and you're gonna fly again. <laughs> you're a dangerous dude. Yeah, I've had a lot of interesting things happen. It's I used to have it not even 10 o'clock yet. Fine. All right, the Danny's here with the stiletto. It looks like we're going to have a flying day. It's it's good and wet and damp and humid. I don't think there'll be a lot of solid lines in the grass this morning. Taking a practice flight here. Well, the word is they want to fly expert first, so as soon as I finish this flight, I'll go over and get the equipment. See if we have any air here. Well, we had some dead air yesterday. Another little problem that's come up in the last week here is because of the crazy summer we've had. And the encephalitis scared as if several people have died in the New York area from mosquito-borne encephalitis. We're now in the middle of a mosquito nesting season that should have been this summer, but it's now delayed and we're all getting bitten up by mosquitoes. The club has graciously donated a case of uh, oil so that everybody can have uh, adequate mosquito repellent. going through his own lake so we know the air is a little bit dead still funky and dead and it's really difficult to back up because out there it's like a grease pit once you get off one of the concrete beds it's really slippery so that becomes a problem unto itself also and you really don't want to start running back and slip and fall either and in between swatting mosquitoes and getting the fog off your glasses and who knows what else, hey? That's why stun is such an adventure and so much fun. But it looks like Al finally got a flight without some part of the tune pipe system flying off the plane. Major accomplishment. By the way, that's not funny. We kid around about it, but guys that do this for the first time have no idea about the stress that's on that pipe setup. And if they don't use uh, you know, something reasonable, Several people have had them fly off and go through a plane. Jimmy had one go through a, the wing of somebody else's plane. Or even worse, take your eye out or something. If that technology is new to you, you want to, you know, just be doubly safe. Also now with Bill Richards building a a cardinal kit. We'll be looking forward to seeing him. He's one of the regular Windy Sees Every video on that he possibly can. I hope Bill is going to be sending us a regular supply of pictures of how his kit is progressing. And as the new subscription starts, this is the... Uh, we're definitely going to be building wings this week coming up no matter what the weather is. Itching to get a new plane on the board. It's a funny feeling this time of year, how you just want to get something new on a board. I don't know, like having grandchildren, you just 
you want to see them grow up and who knows what, become flyers or doll collectors or whatever. And again, the response to the website has been unbelievable. I can't believe it's been this good, but heck, what do I know about email? I can't even type. Anyway, if you haven't seen it, WindyErtnowski.com, U-R-T-N-O-W-S-K-I. The new look in scorekeeping, the uh, Three Kings look, or what? <laughs> That's the stuff I gave you? No, no, you gave it to Sleepy. I gave it to Sleepy, so now you, you no, have no, no. mooched it. We, we, everybody has it. We all bought it. Isn't it funny how whenever I have a good idea, everybody takes it. full and credit? It, and it smells great. Yeah, I know. Put it on your pants. <laughs> Lorraine will think you're having an affair instead yeah, of flying. Like perfume. Yeah, it's got some perfume or something in it. So your plane smells like a prostitute at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you'll match. At least we'll match, right? <laughs> now, that is good stuff. good stuff. I've used that. This well, is that's how we discovered it, because... Uh, I gave one to Sleepy. I'm yeah. afraid he'd never wipe the plane off when I gave him the plane. Apparently, Jimmy said you told him, just use this stuff. Yeah. And when Jimmy saw the job, did he use a little bit on his notebook? Use it on a car. It works good. <laughs> Believe it or not, it works on cars. So. <laughs> hey, nice watch, Bobby. I, it on I didn't know you had this much money. I would have thought, you know... <laughs> I would have like a wind and dine you as a customer. I, I, I have a fetish for watches. Wow. This one was reasonable. I got this in BJ's. It's a hundred dollar watch, twenty five bucks. You Do you know the story of this watch, Bobby? My wife got me this watch. Well, that's an antique. For a no, no, no. She got it for a birthday present or something. So it's it had some meaning to me. And one year it just disappeared, and I I don't know where it went because I only wear it once a week. So what happens is I'm up getting a Christmas tree out of the garage, and there's a frozen block of ice up there from the roof leaking yeah. and where the Christmas tree was the watch at the oh, band is sticking out of the ice oh, I pulled yeah. it out <laughs> it was up there since the previous oh, Christmas Jesus Christ. Oh. You, it slipped off your wrist you yeah when I was putting the thing away it just popped off I guess that's funny okay. oh thank God you found it yeah oh was I happy when I found it that stuff works good oh those tapes are great the tapes are I'm great. Too, yeah, they are super. Where do you get to nine? Nine well, is I know, nine I, is. I, I was telling. Save that for Lorraine when you have a party. Lorraine about that. <laughs> well, why don't we just watch nine? I said, well, you can watch nine. I'm no, 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 no. You gotta watch them from the beginning. You gotta watch like a whole movie. The scale was great. Nice. Yeah, yeah. John Brodak's plane looked good. The scale. That John, John, John Brodak's little so plane nice looked real good. That uh, it's too bad Jack Sheik's radio had a fade. Yeah. You know your head is steaming. Look at look at his head yes, steaming. Yeah. Look at this. I wonder if we can get this on the tape. <laughs> what, are you, what are you sweating from? I always How can you get up with a sweat flying stunt? Ted Hendrick! Hey, look whose plane that is. Class too long, did it? Because then he made that big Columbia plane after that. Uh, well, you saw those crash repair tapes, right? Hey, give me a nice picture for the website. I got one of the lark, but I'm going to get one. Hey, you're going to let me fly this when the contest is over, right? Okay. I'll swap your flight on Strega. I'll trade you my van for yours. I heard yours has less miles on it. <laughs> I opened it up. Oh, that's what I So what do you think about Brodak Dope? You should never use it under any conditions. 
Not if you, not if you, unless you, you don't want a good finish. All right. <laughs> you want a nice testimonial here from Tucker Horisiatis. Piffle it off. Boy, I'll tell you, you're a hard man to live with. Look at this. What a, jeez. This whip hasn't flaunted yet. I've flown this bit on the plane. He's back there by the, but he's waxed his shit out of it. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> Sleepy's watching. You get this abuse every place or just here? Every place. It's every place right. we are. <laughs> it's all right. Looks like our, our test plane is here. For We're hoping the contest is going to go quick and smooth, so we're going to have a fun fly at the end of the day. I want to fly Andy's Tucker. He wants to fly. He's already flown this, but he's never flown Strega, so see if he... Uh, well, let's just to see how, how the day stretches on here, or if the weather holds up. For instance, this prop comes off in flight or gets loose, what are we going to do, Mike? Let's hear it. That's not going to happen. <laughs> That's like, you know this gear I sold him? Right in the middle where the bolts are, I left out all the carbon so it comes off in flight. <laughs> you bum. All right, let's do this. Yesterday they had a little bit of a, an engineering dilemma with bolts and nuts and screws and spinners coming off and props coming off. My God. We're always having a lot of fun. Looks like it's going to be a nice day and we're most of all looking for get the contest over so we can have a fun fly. Sometimes I wonder why they even have these contests. They just have, should have the fun fly. Everybody's waiting to fly everybody else's plane. Season is over. Well, this cowling, reason enough to make a fiberglass cowling chewed up. Mike Cooper flying one of the very original. This one really goes back a few years. Original Cardinal kit. Okay, yesterday we really had an ordeal with Mike, of course, not really uh, had the spinner nut frozen to the, the spinner screw and it kept coming loose. And, and he had sandpaper, had sanded the back plate of the engine. A thrust plate loose. I don't know, just a myriad of things that can go wrong go bump in the night. Anyway, he's one of our club up and comers. I'm not sure if he's in advance this year. I'm not sure.
boy, certainly looks like from the beginning of this season to the end, Mike's made a lot of progress. He's <coughs> certainly one of the, Mike Kajewski and Mike Cooper both really highly improved this year. And now that Bill Richards has a Cardinal kit, and there's maybe three of these Cardinals duking it out here soon. I don't know. We'll find out. Are you going to put on a good show for us? I think you don't care. You got to wax this. Clean it up. You're on the jet program here, baby. Come on, come on. Hey! You know who it is, Frank Gary, Andy? Believe it, what is he doing? What the hell are these guys doing here? They're flying two guys to fly one plane? Oh, he's, he's working on the... Trying to hook up his RC. Oh, okay. I guess it's well, you never know what you're going to see at the circle burner field here. 48 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to drop a bomb or something. The bat, yeah, they're going to drop the, uh, the B-36 rocket or something. That was my highlight. Do some crop dusting, maybe. <laughs> Well, they don't even have all the Cubs. Audrey nice doesn't have his Cub out here. Yeah. I thought there was two guys flying it. Well, you never know. There is again. Oh, he's back. Look, he's back. Look at this. They're refueling in flight or something here. He had to get a battery, probably. A battery. Look at this, now see. You never have this problem in control line stunt. You only have the, the two pipe flies off. <laughs> what is going on over here? This is like the Red Green show. Look at this. That'd be funny while he's doing this is tie his shoelaces together. It's great weather for the scale flyers. Yeah. Oh, it's perfect. It's perfect for us too. It's great for things that don't fly. Okay, here we go. Now what are we doing? Adjusting a handle in flight? Look at this, amazing. We're getting hooked up here. Oh, this is like a, oh, throttle, okay. Wow. Can do a touch and go? This could be on the Red Green show, it's so funny. Okay. This is the cup that has the four stroke in it. It sounds great, I Yeah, it does. That's what a real cub sounds like. It is, really. Ooh. That'd be cool in a stunt show. There's a... Yeah. Italian guy that flies a four. Yeah, stunt yeah. I heard. Yeah. I saw it in. I guess in uh, Stunters. Yeah. I've seen video of it. Somebody had video. It doesn't have much of a two-four break though. It's got a four-four break. I guess you don't need it. It's just so. It's always fun. Well, Bob, it's like arteries. You know, you can live without them. Yeah. I want to see if you can go. Yeah. What are we doing here? Get. Is how many guys are in the middle of the circle now? Oh, I can't even follow them. We're back to having one guy in a circle? Okay. That is cool. Come on, come on. Put it in. Should be running motor. That yeah, idle's nice. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty. Everybody. You're up? 
Confusing the event with the hand launch glider event, Rich has decided not to use lines and just launch the model here. Look at the, by the way, this is a dumb thing to do. If that plane slips, you just wasted a year of your life. They caught me on a spot. Now your camera's not backwards. Rich just flies backwards. He thinks he's George Aldrich. Dave Cook or somebody. You could override it if you want. But you get lazy when you start using all the focus. This is the jack of all trades. The jack of bone of all. I think you should prime it more. Look at this. He's got a puddle underneath it. Cut a hole in the bottom. You got to make a room for the pipe. Okay, you just kind of leave the scoop off, or could you do? It? Yeah, you could do it either way. I guess if you right make a few sides of the You don't even have to. Part of the pipe always sticks out, unless you make like a thunderbolt where the body's real big. What's that? Is that a jet? Yeah, jet fifty. Okay. This is what the world looks like when you're left-handed. <laughs> The scale guys almost just hit a judge. <laughs> well, we got some guys today. This is a good day. A lot of accidents waiting to happen walking around out on the field here. That's what I like about the building season. The worst that happens, you cut your finger off. Anyway, we are really psyched up about the building season. Boy, I can't wait. I can't wait. It's coming. We hope we're going to have all of the parts of our soon-to-be-started P-51 on tape for you. And I hope we're going to have the usual people from the subscribers that contribute photos, sending us all the new projects that they'll be working on this winter, should be a lot of fun. And one of them is our friend Rich Jackabone, who's already got his new sprig about half done, I don't know, some, somewhat done anyway. He doesn't want to bring it over because he knows I'll critique it from Last year we saved him, he had put a joint in the arrow shaft and did the worst joint I've ever seen. It definitely would not have held up in service. But luckily, Mike Kajeski saw the mistake, caught it while the plane was still in bare bones, and we were able to save his model from the, the whatever. I 
Now, just to give Rick some of the credit he's due, this is the first model he's built in over 40 years, so we will give him a break. Not much of a break, though. The only reason we give him a break is because he buys bagels once in a while. I noticed today he did not bring bagels, so we do not have to be nice to him. Hey, and I hope John Brodak's going to be sending us some pictures soon of his new stuff. I know he's working on all kind of cool stuff I've heard through the grapevine. Bring us up to date, John. What's the lap time? There's footage of Ted's Bearcat going on here. Interesting, Billy Rowledge is, and I've heard Al Rave are both working on Bearcats. I hope that's true. We're going to see some interesting stuff in the next year's Nats, that's for sure. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Got a killer shot of it. Yeah, well, give me some pictures. Get two sets made. Now we're at the end of this tape. We're going to pick this up on the next tape. I don't like to end that. Uh, cut somebody off. Somebody's middle of their flight. So. We'll pick this up on the next tape. Still have a lot of the day left, and I'm looking forward to getting some of the official flights and some of the fun fly. Assuming this day looks like this day is going to hang tough all day, it should be a good one.